Yesterday, TJ, we had a pretty lengthy discussion about uh, Don Staley and the sincerity of her faith. And she made a lot of statements after the game, on the court, on the stage, and I think even in the press conference. I was skeptical of them and, and uh, wondering like, hey, where's all this coming from? Is this a smoke screen? The Daily Beast uh, has published a story about Don Staley and uh, her proclamations about faith. Let me see if, yep, here we go. Call this up here. They're upset with Don Staley. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> the NCAA's hoops coach might be violating her players' religious freedom. Uh, this is Frankie Della Kretz or whatever, some woman that works for the Daily Beast. And so when I first saw this story, I, my reaction was, this is part of the gimmick, that the left is pretending like they're upset with Don Staley. But then I read the story, and I have to admit, I was unaware that Don Staley had been making these types of statements since, I believe, 2021, then on into 2022. She, a year or so ago, she blocked me from her Twitter feed, so I don't get to see what she tweets out about. Uh, and so she tweets out a lot of times during the season her daily devotionals before games. And, and reading this story, I started to go, well, hold on. I, I, may, be, I may have judged too harshly. Uh, there may be more sincerity here than I'm giving her credit for. And, and I have to be willing to say, like, okay, she's dead wrong on this transgenderism. And she needs to understand that. But when people start leaning into their faith, perhaps later in life, or when they start leaning into a deeper understanding of their faith later in life, they have some conflicts. They have some things they haven't quite figured out yet, but maybe she's on the path to figuring it out. And so I, I just... You've read the story, same as me. Uh, does this give you a different point of view or more grace uh, as it relates to Don Staley? Yeah, I think so. And I like your point about her age. She's 53. So she yeah. started doing this when she's 51 years old, maybe 50. Uh, at this point, still single, searching. And she's been one thing that I actually appreciate, and we talked about this a little bit yesterday, but it's she's not dancing around that she's a Christian. Like on Easter, I didn't catch this until the story. She said at the end of her press conference, he is risen. So she's very clear that she believes in the God of the Bible. She says, thank you, Jesus. She, she attempts to quote scripture and says, this is found in the Bible. I do appreciate that. She's no theologian. When you read the story, like on her devotion, devotionals, it'll say Jesus versus North Carolina. And it, as though Jesus is on their side, you know, and so <clears throat> let me throw, don't stop, but just let me throw this in. She's an uncovered woman. She needs to be studying a Bible under the discipleship of a man. And so that's why I think she's potentially struggling. She's trying to do it alone. Hats off to her. I want to be supportive. When she gets deeper into the Bible, she'll understand she needs to be doing and maybe she belongs to some church and there's some elder minister or whatever that's helping her but but if she's making some mistakes it's probably because she's an uncovered woman she's not married to a man she's not in that relationship and again part of my grace and part of why i'm backpedaling and apologizing is like oh man she's going through the same thing that i'm going through she's made a bunch of mistakes and, and this will sound funny but i'm just keeping it real does she got the same problem I got? Does she like young women? Is, is, is that the <laughs> issue? Do we share the same problem? Uh -huh. and, and, uh, and, and, and I'm sympathetic towards her uh, for, for, that, for that reason. It's like, oh, man, I'm starting to recognize the struggle. And, and so anyway, continue. No, I, I'm, I'm, so I'm right there with you. The, the, the hardest thing at any age is you've experienced it. You'd speak this better than probably anybody that I know. To go from a 
somewhat private faith, at least on a scale that you're doing it now, to saying, I'm going to take a step forward today, and I'm, in my press conference, I'm going to say something about it. That's actually a big step. And so she may have it all wrong. In fact, I think she's got a lot of it wrong based on what I'm reading in this Daily V story. Although, uh, if I take this at face value, it would be the first thing I've ever taken at face value that came out of the Daily V. So I, I don't know necessarily what to believe from them. But if she's trying to take steps, you told me yesterday, I actually didn't know this. It, it's just assumed that she's a lesbian and that she's never actually come out and said that that's something that she believes in or, you know, whereas, I mean, I was, Candace Parker used to be married to Sheldon Williams, and now she's like, yeah, by the way, I'm a lesbian. You never thought of it. So most of these girls are out and out about it. it. It struck me as kind of weird that she's not. She is a coach, and so if she was out of the closet with her, it would lock her out of some homes. And, it, it, and particularly, there's some black mamas that would, you know, they can co-sign a bunch of stuff that's left and immoral, but they draw a little sign, a uh, line in the sand over sexuality. Hmm. Yeah, I, got, I got people like that in my family. It, they're good with almost virtually every sin, except, except for then they'll draw a line, oh my God. You know, their kids can deal drugs, they can do anything, but <laughs> don't you be no lesbian. <laughs> <Don't> you, <laughs> <that's> no <laughs> are there any openly lesbian coaches? I'm sure there are, mm -hmm. but for a black woman that relies on uh, single or black other black women to deliver their kids to them, it's just a bit more ticklish. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I you know, isn't Tara Vanderveer the Stanford coach? There, there's a lot of them that I think seem to be comfortably out of the closet. She comfortably dresses that way. Yes, she does. So, I mean, it's, it's not a big secret as far as yes. the way she presents herself. It's like you could see with Diana Taurasi didn't have to tell me she was a lesbian. Yes. She just needed to dress like that on yes. television and, and you knew. But what that, where I'm going with that is that perhaps all of that has just been a struggle for her. Yes. And so if, if she's authentically fighting against her own sin, I don't have a problem in the world with her. I'd, look, I will fight with you. I will hopefully constructively criticize when you have your issues with the transgender stuff and the racial idolatry and the stuff that when you step in it, we're all going to step in it. But if she's authentically fighting against her own sin and trying to authentically move her players and disciple them as best she can as a head coach, I got no problem in the world with her. I, I still find some of it kind of hard to believe, but there's more history here than I was anticipating, you know, as we talked about yesterday. Hard to believe what, 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 Explain, elaborate on that. I don't find it hard to believe that she cares and believes there is a God. I find it hard to believe she's fighting against her sin authentically and that she doesn't think this other stuff is fine. The racial idolatry and the transgender stuff. I don't, I don't, I don't know that she's identifying, here's where I am today, but I know I got to get over these hurdles. I, I, I think she's probably not there. She's not. She's in a tough spot. This is like the spot that I see a lot of churches get into. In ter there's a lot of things churches will ignore or justify because they're saying, look at all the good I'm doing. And so, oh my God, if, if, if we dealt with the fact that our minister's a heretic and he's sleeping with every woman in the church, do you understand how many kids wouldn't get backpacks and wouldn't have the after school program mm -hmm. and we wouldn't be able uh, to pay for so-and-so's medical bills and blah, blah, all this good we're doing in the community. But if we address that the pastor is, you know, sleeping with a dozen different women in the church, man, do you know how many people that would hurt? And so they just overlook it. And, and, and so Don Staley said, look at this. I, I'm inspiring so many people as a coach and making women think that they can be leaders and you know, I'm helping this girl and that girl, and if you only knew, if it wasn't for me, what this girl that was on the team, what her life, and so they just justify, and, and, and I, I find it all very relatable, and, and so I want to be man enough uh, to come on this show and say, oh man, I, I, I think I had the wrong narrative on Don Staley, I, I'm not sure if I'm completely wrong, but I know I need to be more sympathetic yep. and, 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 you know, literally I, 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 
you know, again, Don's blocked me on uh, Twitter. Uh, I'm sure she doesn't like me. But, Don, I, I want to apologize and, and say that, uh, you know, I want to take a step back and, and you know, look from afar and, and just evaluate what's going on. And if uh, anybody on this show or anybody can be an asset to you in your walk uh, and be more sympathetic about your walk, uh, I'm certainly willing to do that. I, I, the, the transgender stuff, I think, you know, caught her with her pants down in terms of there's no way she was expecting someone to ask that question because everybody knows the rules. You know, don't ask them anything uncomfortable if you want to keep access. And so she knew it was a big question. I don't, clearly I don't like her answer, particularly if she's on this faith journey. And so her best answer should have been, hey, I'm not going to deal with that right now. We can, I'll have a longer conversation after the season or something if you want. That would have been the best answer. Uh, she gave the absolute wrong answer. Uh, that's probably to protect her spot, mm -hmm. not deal with the blowback that would have come with that. And, and again, that, that's, it's tough, man. When you walk, it's a very narrow path. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you're gonna lose a lot of friends uh, if you really go down this path. Why is the road of destruction? Yeah. What I would, the, the one thing I would add to this <clears throat> is that, I, I hit on this yesterday a little bit, we, we do have serious jobs as Christians now to hold her accountable to this Bible because Revelation 3.16 says, so because you're lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I'm about to spit you out of my mouth. And so if you think you can live in sin and play this, only I'm the vocal Christian, but over here I'm going to live this potentially lesbian lifestyle. I'm going to support this transgender, anti-God narrative. I'm going to... Uh, you know, live in this racial idolatry, and that's totally fine, and you're going to co-sign that. That's what I thought of when you were talking about the, the church does a lot of this. Well, here's the good things we're doing. Those good things aren't going to get you anywhere. That's, that's not going to put you in a, you know, you can do, there, there's a lot of really good people by our standards that are living in hell today. And so that our job as Christians then would be to move her out of that and hold her to this standard and say, these positions that you hold are antithetical to the biblical positions that you claim to follow. So how do we reconcile these things? And because of the position she's in, she's so powerful at South Carolina and within the sport of basketball, she's probably just not getting challenged much. And, and uh, having known some people uh, in the basketball world that have had some dealings with her, you know, she wields her power very effectively and can bully people and, and you know, but it, it's mistakes we can all make. And, and she certainly as it relates to racial idolatry and like what she did to BYU, what she did to Lisa Bluter. Again, this is why I go back. She's uncovered, man. If she had a husband to talk to and, and who was a believer and, you know, had some real hard line understanding, <laughs> like a husband, baby, no, no, we're we not doing that to Lisa Bluter. Cut that out. Mm -hmm. And we're not going to do this to this BYU people. Mind your business, coach your team, uh, leave BYU alone, uh, pray for that little Rachel girl that, you know, started this. But, but when you're uncovered and you're out there, you're making your own decisions and you got, you know, it, it, it's rough. You're going to make it. Not that men don't make the same mistake because she do. She watch it. You know, Stephen A says he has some faith and he was the ringleader trying to lynch the people out of BYU. Remember, he's got, Stephen A's calling a minister, hey, I'm about to cuss Jason Whitlock out and do some of the most unchristian things I can. I just want to tell my minister that up front. Yeah. Well, again, Stephen A's making a fool out of Christianity, making a fool out of his minister, setting a horrible example. It is, you know. And we can all do that. And this is something that you've acknowledged when, when we had uh, Gabe on the show. Like, this is why we're a pair, because men are supposed to be the leaders of the relationship. Gabe Rent, you're talking about. Gabe Rent, thank you. Yeah. And women, there, there's a reason Bible, the Bible identifies wisdom and calls it by her. And so women should be able to speak in and help the man lead. But the man needs to lead. And so you need to be able to give instruction. And so single people have it harder. It's a tough deal. I know a lot of, take my sister. She's a leader in her career and she's had a bunch of leadership positions in corporate America. 
it's hard for them to turn that off when they come home. Mm-hmm. So here's Don Sadie, a basketball coach. She's a leader, 24-7. Hard, you know, hard for her to turn it on and off, particularly when you're uncovered. My sister's been married three times. You know, she throws off the coverings. I'm sorry, yo, yo. <laughs> but, <laughs> she, she throws off the covering every time. She, <laughs> Don, Don's not married. She doesn't even have anything to throw off. I, I mean, when you're a single woman, you, you have to lead yourself. You don't have a choice. She's in a, she's in a hard spot. And again, perhaps she's doing the best thing she can. That The Bible doesn't explicitly say it is sinful to want to sleep with a woman. It is sinful to engage in the act of sleeping with a woman. And so perhaps, I doubt it, but perhaps she's saying, I don't like men, so I'm staying out of it. But I'm not going to go out there and parade around as some sort of lesbian and, and also quote this Bible. Those two things aren't going to work. Don, uh, I apologize and uh, we'll be taking a closer look and, and trying to evaluate and help if we can. If you enjoyed that video, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe so you never miss a moment of fearless. Thank you.